السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لعل السلام والوحدة داخل الدين الواحد وبين الأديان والمذاهب يحافظ عليهما ويطبقان في الغرب أكثر منه في الشرق أو بين الدول الإسلامية من داخل مؤتمر السلام والوحدة في اسكتلندا نرصد آراء المنظمين والمشاركين في هذه التظاهرة الإنسانية الجامعة معكم زينب صفار تابعوا لعلك اليوم تجد البلاد في الاتجاهات الأربعة غارقة في تشتت وحروب ونزاعات مختلفة حتى بات مفهوم السلام والوحدة ترفا لا ننعم به في منطقتنا العربية فالعقود الأخيرة شهدت تمزق المجتمعات الدينية والثقافية الكبرى في العالم بسبب فتن متنقلة وسوء فهم وانعدام الثقة إلى درجة أرغمت أولئك المهتمين والحريصين على السلم الأهلي على إعلان الرفض القطعي لكل المعتقدات والأنشطة التي تفرق وتدفع بإسفين بين الناس وعلى التركيز من جهة أخرى على الأنشطة والمفاهيم التي توحد المجتمعات المتنوعة ولاسيما ما تلك المتعايشة في اسكتلندا وذلك بحسب منظمي مؤتمر السلام والوحدة في دورته الثالثة والذي عقد في مدينة غلاسكو المؤتمر ركز على مفاهيم السلام والوحدة والتسامح والمصالحة والتضامن واحترام الناس من أي مكان أتوا وتوجه تحديدا في ذلك إلى الساسة ورجال الدين والباحثين وصانعي القرار والمعلمين والتربويين والإعلاميين ودعا إلى الترفع عن الاختلاف بين المذاهب والأديان والثقافات وإلى الإعلان أن كل البشر يتمتعون بحقوق وقيم عالمية متشابهة ومتساوية تتخطى كل الحدود وتعبر كل الفلسفات وهي من رحم كل الأديان والمعتقدات وأنماط الحياة المؤتمر نبذ التطرف بكل أشكاله بين الأديان وداخل المذهب الواحد ولا سيما التطرف باسم الإسلام وغيره من الديانات أو القضايا مجموعة من المنظمين والمشاركين في مؤتمر الوحدة والسلام في اسكتلندا يتحدثون من الداخل عن مشاركتهم في هذا الحدث وعن المجتمع الاسكتلندي وإلى أي مدى تتعايش المكونات المختلفة اليوم ولا سيما في ظل أحداث سببها تطرف ديني ولماذا تقلق بعض الجهات من مساعي الوحدة وكيف تنعكس القضايا في المنطقة العربية على المجتمع الاسكتلندي اليوم Sheikh Rehan Raza from Minhaj Al-Quran Society, welcome to Minhaj Al-Quran from the inside, Thank sir. Thank you very much. Always welcome, sir. Well, in the context of the Peace and Unity Conference, you held also various meetings that promote interfaith, intrafaith, also coming ga gathering and coming together of various schools of thought. What is the prime target and purpose of having such kind of gatherings now? Why the need for unity now more than ever? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, in terms of the need of unity, unity has always been uh, the center of our struggle. The need at the moment, we need to promote intra-faith as well as interfaith harmony. Intra-faith means to promote unity within the Muslim Ummah, within mm -hmm. the different schools of thought within the Muslim, according to the verse of the Holy Quran, وَاَتَّسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِينَ وَلَا And particularly what happens in the Middle East has an impact in mm -hmm. Scotland or any other part of the world. Why? Because now the social media mm -hmm. has become a source of information and everyone has information at their fingertips. So when people tend to highlight things like the Shia Sunni tension, but unfortunately they don't understand there is no Shia Sunni tension in the Middle East. It's actually people who are targeting the Sunni people as well as Shia and exploiting the simple minds of people to create division. Now, our duty here is to identify those problems and inform the people so that they have a better understanding of what's happening around the world so that we can build a cohesive Muslim community in Scotland and contribute to the wider society. Mm -hmm. In terms of interfaith, interfaith is always required. Why? Because this is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. He promoted interfaith dialogue. He, he had dialogue with the Jewish community, with the Christian community. And it's also, this is a reflection of the verse of the Holy Quran. 
يا 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 اهل الكتاب تعالوا الى كلمه سواء بيننا وبينكم that all people of book come to common terms between ourselves and yourselves so we are just basically following these commandments of the Quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to unite muslims to unite the people of book and then unite the people of humanity. Mm -hmm. When you come to tell the people about the importance of interfaith, interfaith, gathering and dialogue and uh, coming together, do you, uh, you identify the problem, but do you uh, identify who is behind the problem? Yes, we, we say that the people are being exploited mm -hmm. by foreign intervention. Mm -hmm. That's one reason. And then there are some state-sponsored individuals from both sides mm -hmm. who exploit the simple minds of the general public and make them stand against each other as well. Mm -hmm. And what the ulama are doing in, in Iraq, in Syria, and uh, um, uh, even in Lebanon and other countries, Middle Eastern countries, and Palestine, I have personally seen, because I have traveled to Lebanon, uh, attended conf international conferences, where I see the unity in its practical sense not just lip service. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what we see in other parts of the world is lip service of unity. But when it comes to the essence of unity, that is having a pure heart towards your other fellow Muslim brother or fellow in humanity, that is what is lacking. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're trying to create amongst our community. Sheikh Rehan, why are uh, certain sides that worried about unity of Muslims? I think the reason why people are worried because in unity is strength. Mm -hmm. If we were to unite as a Muslim community and as Muslim countries, mm -hmm. then we will not witness the issue of Palestine. Mm -hmm. Then we could legally take that up and make our voice heard at international community. Mm -hmm. We would not face the issue of Yemen. Mm -hmm. We would not face the issue of Syria. We would not face the issue of Kashmir. We've seen what right. people are being and brutally Bahrain, killed in and Bahrain and, and other countries mm -hmm. in Iraq as well. But if we have a united front, then we will have a a collective voice to challenge those people who seek to divide the Muslim community and not only the Muslim community in Iraq and other places but the community of Iraq, Syria, Palestine, anyway, regardless of which denomination they belong to. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Scotland where we are now, is there sectarian issues in the Muslim community in Scotland, sir? Alhamdulillah, no. We have not come across... Lucky you. Al Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We have never come across it's not manifested in any way. Mm -hmm. What we see and what when we work with different mosques, when we engage ourselves with the people, and even tomorrow, you, uh, well, in the Peace and Unity Conference, you will see that it will be a display of unity, not only of Muslims, but people of across faith and people who do not associate the, um, themselves with faith as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what measures are taken to create a better understanding in uh, Muslim community in general? Well, whenever I myself or anyone else, uh, the people who I work with, whenever we want to hold a dialogue, we follow the verse of the Holy Quran, mm -hmm. which says, mm -hmm. That call the people towards your Lord with the best and beautiful teachings and argue with them in the best possible manner. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the best way. Dialogue is the best way forward. Differences always occur. But certain schools of thought today in the gathering, for example, they refuse to come and take part in your gathering. Well, the, they refuse the dialogue. The issue with would you like to name who? Yeah, I, I would say uh, I, I don't like naming people, but mm -hmm. yes, there are people who have this, like I said, people who have mentality, who have extreme views towards a certain sect, which is completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And Islam totally condemns that in the strongest terms. Mm -hmm. There is no room for extremism, mm -hmm. whether it's in, in religious extremism, whether it's political, any form of extremism, extremism. Mm -hmm. it's completely uh, alien to the Islamic teachings. Right. But unfortunately, these people are backed up or these people have a mentality that comes from a certain theology mm -hmm. that does not, that promotes intolerance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, those sides, they uh, resort to a kind of monopoly, as uh, the people were saying, that there is a kind of monopoly of God, that God belongs to us and God does not belong to the others. That's why we tend to brand the others as takfiris. That, that's one of the major diseases that is faced by the Muslim Muslim, of the, you know, excommunicating people from the fold of Islam. Mm -hmm. No one has a right 
to excommunicate an individual or a group of people from Islam. These people, they think that they are the pioneers of Islam. They think they know the Quran and Sunnah better than other people. So therefore, anyone who seeks to disagree with them, they excommunicate them from Islam, mm -hmm. which is completely wrong. And the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam said that if one person calls his other brother, Ya Kafir, O mm -hmm. Kafir, O Mushrik, yeah, or or Mushrik or any yes. other thing, it will either come back to one of them. Right. In other words, if that person is a kafir, then he will be. If it's not, then it'll come to the person who's making that accusation. So mm -hmm. therefore, this is a very, very thin line that a person has to understand. It's a very difficult and, and another thing I, I'll just highlight here, that the problem lies in when the differences trickle down to the Ammatun mm Nas, -hmm. the general public, and they start debating on scholarly issues, it, it creates further tension. Mm -hmm. And Alhamdulillah, here in, in Scotland, we, we tend to keep people away from these things. We, we advocate for this, that we should leave the matters with the scholars, mm -hmm. scholarly matters. When it comes because to they are deep in their thoughts, they are experts, they have research, but the common people, for example, they don't know a lot about Of course, it's just a simple example. When we talk about medicine, Mm -hmm. When you talk about, like for example, no one will come to a scholar and ask, I'm ill and I need medicine. You will go to a doctor. Of course. If you have any People issue with your eyes, you will go to an optician. How do the Middle Eastern issues today impact the lives of the people in Scotland? Because you talked about this issue at the beginning and you said that uh, you are not detached from what is going on in the Middle East. Well. As you know, this is the day of te te technology and we see that social media has taken over the lives of people now. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter or any other med social media platform, some people have information more, it's more accessible now than it was before. Because before you had to go to a TV and watch TV and see the news, but now you have everything in your fingertips. Mm -hmm. So what happens in Syria, what happens in Palestine, what happens in Kashmir and other, but Yemen or any other issues, it's at the fingertips of the young people as well. So what they see, and, and, and one thing I want to make clear here as well, that this source of information, when it comes to young people, they are made vulnerable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why? Because they see the injustice. There is no action by the UN. There is no action by the Arab League. There is no action by the OIC. These do exist, mm -hmm. but the, it's, it's a dead body. Mm -hmm. It does not have a soul. And that soul is to look after humanitarian causes and to seek to alleviate poverty, to seek to alleviate any form of, uh, you know, trouble that the humanity faces. But unfortunately, these different organizations are dictated or they are uh, manipulated by certain powers. Right. Uh, what is your last message, Sheikh Rehan? My last message would mm -hmm. be that, as the Quran says, mm -hmm. that ask the people of knowledge if you are not aware. And just final quote I would like to make here, is that one of the persons said that Islam or religion is like a swimming pool mm -hmm. and the noise always comes from the shallow ends. Right. Many people who are illiterate, people who are ignorant, they are the ones who make too many noise, too much noise. So I pray in the court of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives unity in the Muslim and unity in humanity so that we can live in a more progressive society. Right, uh, Sheikh Rehan Raza from Minhaj al-Quran Society in Scotland. Many thanks indeed for joining us. Thank you. And after the break, we'll be joined with many participants and delegates who took part in the Peace and Unity Conference, people of different denominations, people of different, as you talked about, the uh, interfaith gathering. So we'd listen to their views and know more about the importance of peace and unity, particularly at this point in time. But after the break, إذن فاصل قصير ونعود لا تذهب بعيدا. السيدة ترشنا سينغ ممثلة جالية السيخ في أدنبرا تخبرنا عن مشاركتها في مؤتمر السلام والوحدة وعن مدى جوهرية ذلك بالنسبة إلى السيخ في الوجود والتفاعل مع مرتكزات ومقررات المؤتمر
Right. So it's in Sikhism, we look at everybody from one point, that everybody's a human being first. Mm -hmm. uh, the title of the conference, the name of the conference is Peace and Unity. To what extent are the different communities in Scotland unified? I think they're very much unified in, in many, many aspects. There are, Scotland has one of the best interfaith mm -hmm. groups of work going on in, you know, around in the United Kingdom. And we have a very strong base in, in Scotland of interfaith work. Mm -hmm. Edinburgh has its own Edinburgh Interfaith Association. Then we have the Glasgow Interfaith Association. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Scotland-wide Interfaith Scotland Association. Mm -hmm. And they link in with everybody in all communities from across Scotland. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, when you visit these places and when you go to their meetings, there are people from all faiths and all backgrounds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meeting together and taking forward this message of unity and peace mm -hmm. and trying to break down the barriers that people face mm -hmm. because of religion. Mm -hmm. and, and I think through interfaith we see past that, we encourage people to look past the fact that if someone says what religion they are is to actually look past and see them as human beings as human beings yes. because you all, because we also believe that all the religions they have common values, yes. the humanistic values that exist uh, everywhere, not only the religions but also the philosophies and the lines of thought, they are all based on the issue of the human. Uh, values. How important for you, uh, Ms. Trishna, to participate? I think it's very important that all people come together in these, as in these kind of conferences to show that everybody has this, as you say, it's more of spirituality mm -hmm. together and know that the essence of all religions leads to the one thing mm -hmm. for unity. Mrs. Bridge Gandhi, welcome to Minad Dakhil from the inside. You are the Thank representative you. of the Hindu yes. community here in uh, Scotland, in Glasgow, yes. Ma'am, can you tell us about your participation today in the Conference of Peace and Unity? How important is it for it's you? It's very important for me because I've been involved with the uh, interfaith group for years. When I came in this country about 30 years ago, I started the interfaith group and it's grown so big and interfaith work is very next to my heart, mm -hmm. which I love it and I really participate in every conference, everything with this interfaith work done. Mm -hmm. And for me today, conference is very important. Participation in the conference is very important, for but on the ground, ma'am, how unified are the communities in Scotland? Uh, in Scotland, we have not very many kind of issues yet, but there are certain issues in the different communities at different times mm -hmm. of the year. because. I think the more we get into the community, the more we come to know. But a lot of us, we don't get into the community and interfaith in the community is not so great. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of things are left around. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, I think it's time has come when people are getting to know about the peace world, the interfaith world and their importance with the involvement of the Wh peace world. Why now? Because people, more than ever. people are more aware. Mm -hmm. of the things happening in the world. Mm -hmm. People are more aware and they mo know more now about things and they talk. Before people never used to talk among each other, now people are talking and interfaith has brought people, dialogue has brought people nearer. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's more awareness in the community, in the lot of people who are really inter uh, working with each other. Dr. Ahmed Khwair, Prime Organizer of the Peace and Unity Conference. Welcome to Minad Dakhil from the inside, sir. Always welcome, sir. Now, uh, Dr. Ahmed, tell us please today about this gathering, the type of participants, and why are you gathering today? The prime reason why we are gathering today is we are facing many challenges in society, including the continual segregation between society and its root principles and philosophies. And one of the functions of this conference is to try and facilitate the most diverse group of people together from various backgrounds. We have people here from civic backgrounds, people holding government office, we have people from faith communities, we have people who are volunteer activists. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to gather the most diverse as possible to try and facilitate a uh, dialogue and to celebrate unity within diversity. Mm -hmm. And to what extent do they interact with each other, the various communities? Because we know that in Scotland there are various different diversified communities. And you're right in mentioning this and that's why we think Scotland's a, a very good model to mm -hmm. be facilitating such a conference because um, within Scottish community we have 
I, a reason to celebrate its diversity within, and within exactly. this context of unity. Um, we fundamentally believe that it's a great opportunity to show not just Scotland, not just the UK, but beyond mm -hmm. how people can come together mm -hmm. in a very friendly, um, slightly formal format, but in the future, hopefully, that this can then everyone can network between each other and mm -hmm. facilitate further dialogue between each other and right. solve issues as well. How unified are the communities? The communities... I mean, do they come together only uh, when you have such kind of events and conferences or they interact and they have uh, events together, they share, they... No, definitely. And throughout the year, the reason why we have been able to stage such a conference is because we have developed very good relations within the different sectors of the community. So, for example, we have regular meetings with parliamentarians, we have regular meetings with the police, we have very um, regular meetings with interfaith dialogue, mm -hmm. we have lots of campaigns and mm -hmm. activism projects that we participate in. Only through these continual actions we've been able to facilitate this group of people, the most diverse list ever mm -hmm. for a Peace Unity Conference, into this domain. What recommendations and outcome do you expect out of the conference today? We believe that the conference itself sends a message, a message of unity, a message of solidarity between different groups of people of different backgrounds, of different belief systems, and that we can share common values within this diversity. Fundamentally, celebrating this together tonight is very important and mm -hmm. one we can hopefully build on in the future. I think just generally the these conferences wouldn't happen without people volunteering, giving up their time, sacrificing lots of family time as well mm -hmm. to do this. And Atterbury Society in Scotland, as well as other communities and um, individuals, have come together selflessly mm -hmm. to lead this um, campaign under the banner of peace and unity. There's no, there's no seeking of merit for a certain organisation. It's a humble cause, hopefully, seen in that way. Josh Brown from the Stop the War Coalition. Welcome to Mina Dekha from the Inside, sir. Is everything that is being discussed here in this venue of the conference, does it also apply to the society? I mean, you have lots of ideas. We've listened to lots of fantastic and amazing stuff inside. But do we see them being applied in the society in Scotland? bringing the people together? I, I think in Scotland we're doing uh, quite a good job uh, of implementing the ideas of peace and unity. Um, it's not perfect, of course. We still have, uh, we still, uh, have arms manufacturers here who are producing weapons that are used in conflicts around the world. Uh, private industries, you know, of that sort need to be uh, grappled with. We, we do have, uh, you know, there is discrimination and racism still in Scotland. It's mm -hmm. not as high as in a lot of places across Europe. Mm -hmm. We do have uh, right-wing elements who try to um, sow divisions between people based on race or religion or ethnicity. Um, but I think in Scotland we're doing an, an above average job uh, mm -hmm. at trying to build a positive legacy and mm -hmm. bring people together. So I, I think you know the Peace and Justice um, Conference Peace and Unity Conference uh, certainly plays a role in that. And that's How much important. does it play a role? How much does it help? I think uh, when you look around the room uh, at, the, at the conference, you see a lot of familiar faces from familiar organizations um, who are involved throughout the year uh, in doing good work. So I think um, we, it is something we want to be proud of, uh, the good work that's being done. And the Peace and Unity Conference is a way of celebrating that and encouraging more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Josh Brown from the Stop the War Coalition in Scotland. Many thanks indeed for joining us. Thanks very much. You're most welcome, sir. إذن لقاء جديد في الأسبوع المقبل مع ضيف جديد وقضية جديدة ودائما من الداخل للمزيد من التواصل بريدنا The Inside at Almayadin.net وصفحتنا على الفيسبوك من الداخل من كل فريق عمل من الداخل من كل الميادين من سكوتلندا غلاسكو. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله.